People are worried about a $100 increase on their mortgage. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a talk about the number of people that are worried of an increase to their mortgage of just $100 a month. Now, we shouldn't scoff at 100 bucks. 100 bucks is almost the tank of petrol these days. It's 100 7-Eleven coffees. It's two steaks. It's not that much food anymore with uh, everything going up, but it still is 100 bucks everywhere. So the fact that people are worrying about that, about a $25 a week increase on their mortgage, and that's it's a decent number of people, should be something we need to well, be concerned about. So let's let's have a look at this, guys. Now, here we have the question I put. How much... Would your monthly repayments have to increase for you to get worried? So 18% of the people who responded to my poll, which is very similar to other data coming from other organizations actually, said uh, between $100 or $1 and $100. Then you've got 100 to 100 to 250 is 13%. 251 to 500 bucks is a quarter, so 25%. 18% 500 to 1000 this is a month mind you and 26% will only start worrying after it increases by $1000 so that kind of gives you the spread now this one here this is the most worrying one these are the people that regardless of how expensive property they bought just 100 bucks could be enough to get them worried or they may actually have to take some drastic steps now i want you to stay to the end for five tips on what to do while you, if you're worried about your mortgage, guys. I don't want to just dwell on the negative. We need to have solutions. And, you know, maybe you can add your own in the comments below. So let's keep going. So rates are continuing to rise. Why am I talking about this? Well, for a few reasons, guys. Remember this video. West, Westpac predicts rates will rise just two days ago. and Or a few more than that now. Inflation reaches 3.5%. When are we going to see a rate hike? That was a few days ago as well. Westpac raises rates and find an extra $50. Then you've got a sub-2% mortgages disappear. We've been covering this for some time. NAB increases the fixed-rate home loans. Again, again, the banks have been increasing rates. Again, they've been going up. This is why so many of us locked in to take advantage of, well, the lower rates. I mean, what do you do with the money that you locked in, guys? Did you fiddle it away? Did you put extra aside? Are you investing in it? Are you using like I am, to essentially increase the quality of your house. CBA hikes rates for the fourth time. You've got ANZ hikes rates once again. And Westpac hikes rates four times in two months. So all of the fixed rates are going up. And what's going to happen to variable, we'll have to see. I mean, we'll be shocked if they don't start climbing up too, particularly with the RBA looking at increasing their rate. Now, this is an article just from news.com.au. Rate pain comes for one in five homeowners. Now, even a modest $100 rise in monthly mortgage repayments would push close to one in five mortgage holders off a financial cliff. And this has come from Finder. They've done their own survey as well, which kind of lines up with the percentage that we have here. They're saying 22%. We've got a bit lower than that at, what, 18%, did I say? So maybe that, that just shows the viewing audience of the channel are not well, not as uh, in a financially tenuous position as the responders to a finder survey, which wouldn't surprise me at all considering the content we cover here on the channel. So almost one in four, 22% of mortgage holders were already struggling to pay their mortgage repayments according to Finder's Consumer Sentiment Tracker. And I'll link to that if you want to go through the full article or just have a look at the Consumer, consumer Sentiment Tracker there from Finder. Now, let's have a look at the viewers here of the channel. I just want to go through the, the breakup, guys. 78.13% of you are Aussies, and we've got US and Canada, some in Britain, and I suspect a few expats in Southeast Asia, and we can't forget our Kiwis tucked away down there at still 3%, more Kiwis than Canadians. Now, the gender split, guys, we are 12.1% female, 87.2%. 9% male. That's pretty pretty standard for YouTube. On Facebook, it'll be the complete opposite. And you can see here just the spread. Most of us are, generationally, we're millennials with some boomers and Gen X. Now, the reason I bring this up is just to put the poll into context, everyone. That's 
probably because you know we got more more men here, more millennial men. Maybe they're you know hopefully hopefully not as many are have over borrowed. Now here's the poll. If you have a mortgage, how much would your monthly repayments have to increase for you to get worried? Let us know in the comments what your plan would be to deal with the additional expense. And again, 18%, $1 to $100, we're at the edge already. Okay? What you need to do, what everyone should be doing, if you've got a mortgage, you need to look at what a rate increase would do to you, how much damage it would cause to you, what sacrifices you would have to make. You know, predict a $500 rate increase up, mortgage repayment increase a month. Test that. See what you'd have to do. Be like the the RBA guys. Do the worst case scenario and the media will just jump on the worst case scenario and pump it out there to influence our politicians. But that's another thing. 13%, 101 to 250, as we said. So the poll was conducted on YouTube. 2,123 votes is the time that I captured this. 40 likes and 83 comments. And you can still participate in the vote there. But it's, you know, by about this time, over 2,000 votes, you know, that's a decent sample size, guys. Now, let's jump over here, and I will just bring up, and we'll go through some of your viewer comments, everyone. And I'm just doing that because I forgot to do it. I've had a couple of days off because I've been just doing so much housework the last few days, guys. That's why the videos have been down. And by housework, I mean moving stuff around, like a pile of timber I stored at the front of the front of the block that Rachel said, oh, just put it on the back with that other timber that I probably should have done when she suggested that months ago, but you know, it's happening now. So she got a, I told you so moment. You got to have these gimmies for the wife sometimes guys. So let's jump over here and have a look at some of your comments. And you can see here it, it's now been six days ago. It's 2.2. So just a hundred extra votes, but the numbers really haven't changed. So Mark Pickering is going, I'll finally be mortgage free in five months. Interest rates can go to the moon and I won't mind. Well, congratulations, Mark. Let's raise a stein for that. That's awesome to hear. I love hearing these stories in the comments where people are sharing how they've they've done really well or how they've paid off their mortgage, how they've gotten that, that weight off your back. Michael, drop some shares and pay off the house. There you go. That's a way to do it too. That's what they'd deal with if, if it got to a problem. See, this is the thing. When we, when we see articles like this come from Finder and from news.com.au, emphasize the fact that you know people will be worried or at a, at a fiscal cliff, I mean, how real is it? How much do we actually have to worry about it? What's the potential of it having an impact on the market? Now, the thing is, if you consume this media again and again and again, is that going to have such a negative impact on you that it may give you, uh, you know, paralysis to make a decision? You may miss opportunities. That's that's the thing we need to consider, guys, when we're talking about this. Matt, when I borrow for my home loan or investment loan, I calculate the repayments at eight percent. If I can't afford it at that rate, I don't borrow. So I would start to worry once monthly repayments increase by more than 3K. So Matt's not worried about it. Naked owners doesn't want to vote. Uh, what's the answer? And the answer, well, will be in the video. Uh, Aussies don't do anything and never go out, really travel. All they do is pay off their houses from Nelly. Well, not really. Not really. Aussies don't always, you know, well, maybe now in the last two years we've done that. And so people have been able to jump into the market, but... Are we going to start to see lockdowns for housing? Selling Melbourne and moving to the country to eat lots of peaches. There you go. Locke is saying, I repay the mortgages if it's 15 to 17%. That way I don't have to worry about any increases. That, that's a really smart position to be in. Um, Katrina, my first home was a modest two-bed cottage back when rates were 17.5%. Yes, I'm old. 17.5%. Back then, rural ha- homes required a 25% deposit. I had saved. It was expected, not a problem. I bought at 21. My parents gave me solid financial advice from watching news and current affairs regarding pitfalls and especially in regards to credit, which was viewed with abject horror. You only took on a loan for a house if you had to and then paid it off as soon as possible to avoid interest and fees. Most vehicles I paid cash or had a very small loan for a very short time. I'm not wealthy per se, but I'm not broke either. I went without and continue to go without some things by choice. Here's the thing, guys. You don't, you don't, the secret to happiness isn't having piles of money. It's having le- less stress. Because, you know, when you, you're euphorically happy, it'll come and go down. But if you just live a less uh, stress-free life, 
And the real secret is having control of your time. Every home I've bought since, I've worked out at 17.5%. If I can afford it at that interest rate, fine. I only have one home, no other liabilities, period. No credit cards, I can't afford it. It isn't necessary or I can wait. Bills paid first, I sleep very well at night. Well, that's fantastic advice there. That, that's examples to live by. Mortgage, death in dog Latin. I thought it was life, you know, a loan for life. How did their sentence sold up as soon as I did the research? You never own your property, ask Klaus. Well, okay, you do own your property. You can pass it down to future generations, but you have to pay. You have to pay land taxes in New South Wales. I hate the idea of them bringing that in here. We have to pay you know, utilities and rates, but you get your money's worth, hopefully. I'd be, I'd be much happier if the councils cut off, well, here in Brisbane, cut out all their political correct rubbish. Paradox. Anyone that has a mortgage over 100K will be so screwed soon. Hyperinflation is coming, yay. Been saying this for months. Good luck, and may the odds be in your favor. Well, here's the thing. People have been saying it for years and decades, and it hasn't materialized. So, you know, it's easy to easy to, to say stuff. And here's the thing. The negative gets the attention. Negative makes money. You can make a living spruiking negative stuff. Look at all the people that are running around. Go, You pay to see their courses, and, you know, they're selling you this, that, or the other. Doom merchants. And in a way, there you go, you know, I'm perpetuating it here on YouTube, aren't I? I'm trying to address it and be critical of it. We need to be aware of it. So, I mean, that's the thing. We'll have to see what happens. I don't think 100... I mean, if you... Okay, if we get hyperinflation, boom, interest rates shoot to the moon, your mortgage is going to shoot to the moon, then the cash you should have as well is going to shoot to the moon in interest, and other things will go up as well. So, over half the voters said... Uh, they have it at five hundred dollar increase monthly, which isn't hard on a big loan. It's not, but it's it's higher than you think to get up there. I bought a two bedroom, one unit villa in two thousand. It was one hundred and fifty k. CBA now says it's worth seven hundred thousand, and I've got one more year to go. Well, fantastic! Congratulations, one hundred and fifty k, and now worth seven hundred grand. Bigger. That, that's that's the property issue we have here in Australia. The problem is, in twenty years, if you lived in it. That growth you have, the equity you have there, can you blame people for using that to buy more properties if that's all they've seen? And, and here's the thing. With property, I think a lot of more people are comfortable with it. They can understand it. It's a physical thing. We're more abstract things. They, they, you know, some of them don't understand it as well. And you can't FOMO out of property. You know, you, in a, in, you can sell shares in fear overnight. And we've seen there's now some people predicting a 50% decrease in the share market. And there are some businesses have crashed down that much from their all-time highs. But you saw you know, the retail investors, and we'll discuss this in another video, they sold right before it all bounced back up again. Now, housing, say you want to FOMO out of housing. That'll take months. It'll take months. And that's a lot of – you have to sleep on it. You've got nights of sleep to dwell on that decision. So that's, it's not as fast-moving as other sectors. Black Lotus lives in the U.S. fixed rates mortgage with the win. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a different world there. They've got a mortgage. It's fixed for the entire life of the mortgage. Chris, I'm 31, grew up in poverty in Western Australia, joined the military at 18, bought my first home at 21 for 275 k Me and the wife then bought a second home for 700 k in 2015. For the last 12 years, worked my ass off Saved and went without all the fluff everyone else was buying. Sold both homes, made over 800k combined. Long story short, we just purchased a 1.2 million dollar property outright. Early 30s, two young kids, completely debt free in our dream property. Never given a handout from anyone. Now all my mates who are struggling to get into the market say how lucky I am to be in the position we are. See, this is the thing. It's got nothing to do with luck. Well, we probably got the right woman. Honestly, that, that's, probably, that's probably the luckiest thing there, but a lot of people have the right woman and they still all mess it up. It's hard bloody work. Ten years ago, they were laughing at me over the shoes and clothes I wore. There you go. What did I say to this one? Yeah, I love reading these stories, Chris. Th these are great stories to read. You know, they're awesome. To hear these success stories, we can learn from it. And never, never worry that it's too late, that you missed out on that opportunity. Don't, don't let that get you down. You know, you... you, you the problem is with social media and everything, it's so easy to compare yourself to all these other people thinking, oh, you know, Chris is 31, I'm already 40, I'm 50, I'm 60, what can I do? You need to compare yourself to yourself 
and, and set a path and a plan to improve. And even in your, fi- your finances, it's not about being the richest bloody bastard in the room. It's about being the most stress-free bastard in the room. That's what I consider the competition. And some people don't realize that. I remember I was talking with a gentleman. With three of us had come together to start a business. And both me and the other guy who'd run a business before, when we were talking about this concept we were starting, wanted to lift, build it up, sell, and jump ship. <laughs> That's what we wanted to do. But the other guy was so keen to grow this thing. And he was the one we were depending to get to really uh, bring in the work, and he never did. But you know, that's how it happens. So, Meatball 3000. Kind of scary how many people are in the edge. I own 350K a year and bought a $550,000 home. Grew up in Ireland just as the recession hit. Learned my lesson the hard way back then. Ah, yeah, well, we've heard all heard, hopefully, about the Irish crash. I feel left out. I don't have a mortgage, JK. Uh, to be worried for the household, two to 3,000. But at that point, I would be worried for, about the economy, Armageddon. I'm sure mortgage saver would be announced well before I notice anything that hits the budget. And MD's making reference to a mortgage saver, mortgage keeper, the joke that I make every now and then, that where the government is going to, you know, will do everything they can to intervene. So you can have these uh, predictions of calamity, but... Our government here in Australia, at least the current one, has proven their willingness to take on debt for future generations to intervene in the market to keep everything ticking on. So can you pretty much expect that now? Can you imagine what would happen if they don't? So Jeff Dane, I'm blessed. It seems I'll be able to pay my house out and pick up 1,600 acres soon. Might try goats, although greenhousing is very interesting. Well, good work. My home loan doesn't worry me. My wife's spending does, however. Her credit card got stolen. I never bothered to cancel it as the thieves spend less than her. That's, that's an old joke, but a good one. Very interesting results at 1,000 volts scattered evenly and down to 2,000, very similar. Selling my investment as it doesn't make sense to continue with the additional repayments, but it is a long, long way off till I ever or even consider this. Budgeting for 10% comfortably. I could do 15% and above that I'm selling. So there you go. Uh, you should have reveal results. Yeah, people say that. Well, this is the reveal results, guys. It's, it's a video where we discuss the topic. I'm currently paying an extra 100%, so my buffer is decent at the moment. I also fixed 1.99% for the next two and a half years. So you're going to have a lot of people, I'm similar, that are fixed at a low rate, and then we're going to have a jump. And what do we, Rachel and I looked at a 5%, you know, we'll come out of it at 5% interest. So can we handle that jump? And yeah, we can. You just have to prepare for it. Don't don't spend, you know, don't don't start adjusting your life to this lower rate, thinking that it's going to be there forever. Uh, put the extra money aside, build up a war chest, invest it in some passive income generating shares, so you have money trickling in. You know, you want to use your money to build your future. Don't piss it away on frivolous stuff. Fifty cents a week increase, and I'm homeless, right on the limit. I. I mean, that's, that's pretty sad if you're at that way, MV. You need to cut your costs. You need to sell stuff. And we'll, we'll, we'll discuss, we'll discuss the, uh, some suggestions. Even spread, marry an old lady with lots of money. Regardless of interest rises, people should be more worried about inflation and factor that into the equation. Well, yeah, inflation is starting to bite. We're starting to notice it when we go shopping for food, for meat, for petrol. With all of the imported goods here in Australia, everyone, it's going to get more and more expensive. Let's just bring up everyone's favorite website. And as we're loading that up, we'll just wait. We're just showing you how much is manufactured overseas. Here's the thing. I've been buying power tools to, uh, to help around the house. I bought a little inflator, 94 bucks. A little Ozito one, pumped up the caravan tires like nothing, pumped up the wheelbarrow. It's fantastic. Can now maintain the car. I don't need to go to the petrol station anymore. And it's so cheap, but it's not made in Australia. Just the labor costs and the other costs here. Okay, Observ- observatory of economic complexity isn't working at the moment, but, I mean, you're all aware everything's made overseas because it's cheaper and more competitive. And you'll have people advocating for, oh, we need to buy Australian this, this, and the other, you know, or they want tariffs to do that. But all of those costs get passed on to us, to the consumers. So do you want, are you willing to have a redu- reduction in your quality of life for ideological reasons? I think a lot of people are, are all talk, and most of them, when they see the shops, they get the best value for their money. 
often they could be a more expensive product, but that isn't necessarily made in Australia. Think about it. Who's got the experience now of decades of manufacturing things? So let's keep going. I have 150K left. Don't, doesn't really matter that much, according to Smoochie. Max G, can you add I don't have a mortgage so I can see the results? Yeah, I know. My wife is a nurse and I'm a high school history teacher. Both of us have been working over 10 years, so we're at the top tier of salary. We bought our three-bedroom home for 245000 back in 2013. It's small and modest, but it's very affordable. We've been paying around three times the minimum repayments each fortnight. This still leaves us with cash for three kids, private school, luxury items, miniature war gaming, and a PC gaming. The house is now worth closer to 400000 and we are thinking of getting something bigger. As we only have around 100 square metres of living space, and we're on top of each other. However, we also don't want to pay outrageous prices. As things stand, we could afford this place, even if rates jumped up to the insane 17.1% of the 1990s. Most of the people I work with all bought the five-bedroom mega houses as their first home and spent over 600 grand. They are already struggling without having kids. I'm glad I went for something affordable and practical over my dream home. Right off the bat, delayed gratification for the win. And, I mean, that's fantastic advice. That, that's what we want to see. We want to see teachers like this. Remember that other teacher we read the article about in the ABC where they had five investment properties and they instantly started complaining to the media about their problems. Where the hell do they find people like that? I mean, what are you going to do? Okay, you're going through some tough times. Oh, I better go to the ABC to whinge like a little bitch. I mean, come on. Or am I just showing my my boomer evolution here? I mean, I, I guess if the ABC pays you, I mean, if they're paying you to to be a victim, then go ahead. Let them let them use your for victim points. Use that money to pay off your debts. Okay, if you're paid. But if you're doing it ideological reasons, try and blame others. Maybe that's just people have gotten into a big mess and they haven't quite realised it's their fault. Or is that, is that an old-fashioned concept, guys? Am I, am I so out of date now to think that people have to take individual responsibility? That's my problem. You know, that's what I'm teaching to my children. So, Edwin, I reckon the results would correlate pretty closely to how recently you'd bought. That's true. I imagine too. Richard, if we return to work and add in travel expenses, the mortgage needs only rise a little. So he's close to it. When a low-income couple who saved $1,000 per week... Oh, sorry. We are a low-income couple who've saved $1,000 per week. Our mortgage would have to increase by at least $3,000 per month before it concerns us. There you go. Well, if they're saving fifty grand a year, they're either living very frugally or maybe they're not as low-income as they think. You should have shown me the salt. Really. Yep, yep, yep. We got into, uh, into before things got stupid. We only have... To pay 150 a week, 150 a week. So their mortgage would be what, 150 grand. We uh, we pay a lot more, but don't have to. My advice: if you have money in the bank, withdraw the lot as soon as possible. Bail in. Now, bail in isn't real. Drop there. He, okay, bail in is used by the citizens' party to get you worried. It's not going to happen in Australia. Sure, it could, won't happen. You know, I'll happily bet a card. If if we have the government, the banks bailing you in, then you've got a lot more to worry about than your money. Okay, you've got a much more to worry about than it. We look at Cyprus; it was a shithole bank that was, uh, you know, dodgy, dodgy, and every you know retirees were stupid enough to put their money in there because they were attracted by the high rates. That's why. So you know, I, I'm not worried about ComBank. And anyway, any if if ComBank bailed me in and all my cash got turned to shares, oh well. Hey, you save on brokerage fees. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think it's it's happening. Um, but good on you for having a low mortgage. EV blog. Roughly one-fifth of the poor are only 100 a week. Even that number is scarily big enough to potentially cause big problems in the market. I think, honestly, I, I think the 100 per week we're seeing, how many people have a budget? That, that's Actually, I'm going to put that poll up there. How many of you have a budget or manage your finances? That is what I'd be interested to see because I think a lot of the people are scared at a $100 increase probably because they haven't gone through the papers. They haven't tracked every dollar. They don't know where their money's going. That's what I'm hoping. 
because we've heard this all before of, you know, it's going to cause a big disaster. Sure, there'll be some people that are selling, but I can't see 20% of people FOMOing out of the market. They're going to do everything they can to keep their home. You may have some investors that may be forced to sell, but we'll have to see. They'll probably put their rent up beforehand because the rental demand is high. What's interesting to see the corrections in the apartment market there where all the student accommodation disappeared. We've seen that cool off a bit. Let's bring that up here. We can see this is Capital Cities. And let me just refresh. There we go. We've got this here. We can see apartments have cooled off a little bit, guys, but you know, it's not as crazy as people think. What are we looking at here? You know, two bedroom units, six hundred and seventeen thousand, all units five hundred and eighty seven. And the worst case example is, well, Melbourne asking property prices. We can see here units 575, and you can see how much flat, or 571, you can see how flatter they have been compared to houses. So we need to keep that in mind, everyone. That shows you what happens to, to a market. Property is different to a lot of other things, I would say, here in Australia, because just the liquidity of it, of getting in and out, the actual process of selling is painful, and that'll slow people down. So you know, people are probably willing to cop a bigger loss or ride out for longer than other sectors because it's just more of a, a hassle. Okay, we could sell, we've lost fifty grand on the property. Do we sell and incur twenty thousand dollars in costs, or do we ride it out? Andrew, I feel lucky to have bought on the coast four years ago when you could get a big house for under five hundred. So a little extra one hundred or two wouldn't bankrupt us but less for holidays and stuff. That's what I think will happen. People will, the retail sector will feel it. Feel sorry for people in Sydney and Melbourne with $1 million plus loans. The percent increase will, will hit them much harder. Zero percent interest on mine. Have more cash in my offset than I owe. So legs, there you go. I mean, you're making instantly, what, a 2% guaranteed return? I don't know. I don't, why wouldn't you just pay off the whole thing? Why wouldn't you just pay off the whole thing? And then start investing your cash. But each to their own. No mortgage. I own all my properties outright by Derek. I can't wait to get a return on my savings again. Yes, well, can't we all? Imagine that. Blob, I don't have a mortgage. Yay. And Yogi Bear, I want to see the results. But okay, can't skew the poll. So there we go. So that's, that's going through viewer comments, guys. Now let's have a look at the wider market implications of what's going on here. We can see the RBA, this is predictions from ASX about an RBA rate increase and, well, rate increase or decrease. And the 27th of January, you had no change at 58% and a decrease to 0% at 42 Now, that decrease to zero used to be much higher, okay? And it's never going to happen here, but that's just how the market is indicating it. But we can see here, so no change is going up under when we'll see an increase, now, this is from the latest financial stability review from the Reserve Bank. Now, we need to keep this in mind when we're seeing all of this where people are at $100 at risk. This isn't going to be everyone. You've got household savings as a percent of household disposable income. They are still high. They've cooled down from the peak of 2020, but 2020 was just an unusual situation, everyone. So many people were getting so much free money. I know people who ran businesses that were getting all the, the free money, and you can't blame them for taking it. If they're offered to them, you can't blame it for taking it. I, I probably should have, yeah, but it's too much effort. But So we still have higher than normal savings. Now, this is change in home loan prepayments, and I'll read through some quotes here. Consistent with this, loan level data from the Reserve Bank securitization data set suggests prepayment buffers on the majority of housing loans, excluding loans to investors and fixed-rate loans where there are disincentives or are unable to prepay, have increased over the past year. Okay, so people are getting ahead on their mortgages. And I wonder if those of us who are on fixed rates, and I've asked this in a video before, and I'll refer to this at the end, what are you doing with the extra money, guys? I mean, mine's pretty much going into my house. We're doing renovations. I've just ordered the steel. I'm clearing the site. Father-in-law who's been living with us, you know, just staying two weeks, 10 years ago, finally got the caravan out on the farm. <laughs> that was a mission. So, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding value to my property. 
How many people are saving it? How many people are investing it? Only a small share of loans had low buffers in August 2020 and further uh, decreased their buffers over the following 12 months. So some people are in trouble and they're getting more in trouble. Indeed, indeed, the majority of loans that had reduced buffers relative to a year prior started with very large buffers over the two years. So this is the interesting point to take away from here. People have been working on their buffers. So if we have a extended period of economic troubles, which may happen, then that could cause an issue. But it's not going to be any drastic snap boom. Once, once rates go up, you're not going to start to see properties flood the market and people desperate. You'll see some in trouble, but they're probably already in trouble now and don't even realize it. I think most people are going to be like the comment we read there, the holiday is going to get cut. We're not going to get bankrupt. Just some of the luxuries are going to disappear. Now, this is high debt and low buffer households. The share of households with both high debt and low liquidity buffers is very small. Okay, and we can see here in Victoria, in August 2021, it's just, what we say, that 1.15, and it's gone down. Queensland, from January to August, it's gone down to 1%. New South Wales and ACT, it's gone down. So all of them have gone down, everyone. So high debt, low buffer households are going down. So people are attacking their mortgages, hopefully, or they're paying down their debts. So... Let's look at five tips if you're worried about your mortgage. If you're, you're following the news, you're hearing all about rates going up, you're sitting there and, and concerned, this idea of a $100 increase a month has got you worried. Now, let, let's look at five tips if you're worried about that. I think, number one, if you're in this situation, you need to get your budget all sorted. But there, there's five of them here. The first one is contact your lender and then rent out your room, delay non-essential repairs, learn how to do your own repairs, and rent, vest, move home. Now, the first one here is contact your lender. And this, this is the, the advice you'll get from most mortgage organizations. You know, you can call the National Debt Hotline. They're a not-for-profit free organization on 1-800-077-077 for free financial counseling. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't be too proud to do that. Some of us need help. We've all made mistakes. Contact your lender to discuss your situation. Consider reducing your repayments if you're paying more. Maybe just pay the minimum. If you need to make ends meet, I, I would suggest you look at the debt snowball strategy to reduce some other costs. Uh, you could refinance, consolidate your debt, or, and focus on your mortgage as opposed to other things. That this, I would number one say, contact the National Debt Helpline. Help talk to them, talk to professionals about getting some help on to do it. Now, some other suggestions renting out a room. Now, why am I showing you these images here? You know, earn some extra money to help pay for your mortgage by renting out a spare room. Now, when we started our business, our architectural practice, um, we moved into the entry of a Queenslander. Now, see, hang on, I'll change this. This is, this is a little place in Kangaroo Point that we rented. See that little entry there? That, that's outdoor. Well, not really. It's a, a, the entry space. You, you come out upside, outside. There's a staircase there. You can see through the flooring here. There's no insulation. Rachel and I moved into this. We could just fit our double bed in here. Okay, at the front door. So you couldn't use the front door anymore, but it didn't matter. And we moved into there so we could rent out this room. So here, you can see here, there's the front door through there, which is uh, that room here is the, the master bedroom. And that's in here. Uh, so we, we rented this one out and we moved into this other room. And there's also another bedroom over here that we would rented out. So we'd rented out this room this room, we stayed in here, and I was actually running a business from here at the moment as I'd start working there. We got our rent down to 30 bucks each per week, everyone, $30 per week. Now, this is a two-bedroom property right on the main roads. It's across the road from Finlandson's, if you know, Kangaroo Point, guys. You know, four lanes of traffic, you know, really noisy, uh, and how much do you think it's worth now? 1.56 million bucks, guys. One and a half million dollars for this tiny block. There you go. Three hundred, not even four hundred square meters. Tiny, tiny little place. But it's Kangaroo Point. It's the location. I guess you can kind of walk into the city. But anyway, I mean, this. I'm just giving you this as an example of what you can do to reduce your costs if you're getting that desperate, rather than losing your property. Rather, you know, 
pay the mortgage, rent out a room. Now think about it. Number three, delay non-essential repairs. You know, rough it. Uh, rough it if you have to. We went for several months in the summer without a hot water system because we just needed to keep our, stop our cash flow, keep the money. And if you can manage that in Queensland. You can boil water for baths, things like that. You, you, know, you can rough it if you need to. You need to look at your non-essential repairs, put them off a little bit. You should be spending about 5% of your property value in repairs and maintenance every year, but you need to look at what you can do without and how you can you know, get by. Number four is do it yourself. This is what I really recommend is learn how to do your own repairs. You know, there's some people who don't even change light bulbs. Learn how to do it. You know, buy some old school handyman books, replace glass, paint walls, patch halls, learn to weld things. I'd recommend it. Guys, I'm doing that every day. You need to know what you can legally do and what you can do uh, safely. Yourself, don't do anything stupid. I'd be very careful about electrician. I'd be getting a sparky there and rather than, you know, maybe you can help them out while they're working to reduce their time, to reduce your hourly rate. Run some wire from crawl in the horrible places, things like that. Okay, but don't be afraid to do it yourself. And this should just be a skill you learn anyway. Number five. Now, this is an option if you've really stretched yourself. What if you have to rent vest? Okay, you can't afford the property. You've got to move out, rent out the whole thing. If you can, move in with family, uh, move into a caravan, maybe camp somewhere for a time, stay at a friend's place. I mean, that's going to build resentment. People are going to be pissed off, and it's not really going to be the best thing to do, but that is something that you may need to consider. So, guys, five suggestions. Uh, Number one is contact your lender and contact the National Debt Helpline. Get some help. Rent out a room in there, guys. Uh, Be creative. Delay non-essential repairs until times get better, until you have more cash. Learn how to do things yourself. Learn how to do it yourself. You know, people get a plumber out to unclog a pipe. You can do that yourself too often. Uh, Rent vest if you have to. Move home if you can. Some people, that's not going to be an option. Maybe then rather than, you know, do a stint living in the garage. What can you do? I mean, this is the thing. This is keeping the family home. People will make sacrifices to make this happen. Or maybe it's just cut your losses, guys. So these are the references that I made mention to in this uh, video. And you'll find them on the website, guys. But thank you all for watching. And let me know your suggestions and advice you would give to people. If you want to support the channel, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. And I want to draw your attention to this video uh, to get you to watch it, which is the one about, I mentioned it before, what you would do with your mortgage money. So just to see where people are putting it, guys. Take care, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.